This is Kennedy Classics with Dr. D. James Kennedy. Welcome to Kennedy Classics. Thank you for joining us. I'm Jerry Newcomb. And I'm Jennifer Cassidy. What if life has no purpose? What if we're just the accidental products of time plus matter plus chance? That's exactly what is being taught in schools today. And we see the effects of drilling that into the minds of each generation all around us. Is it any wonder then that we see society crumbling into violence, lawlessness, and hedonism? Should we be surprised that in the course of just a few decades, Virtually all of the moral heritage of the Judeo-Christian world has been thrown out the window. On today's program, we'll take a closer look at how atheistic religion has been smuggled into our schools under the guise of science. And you'll see how the priests of this religion guard against any heretics who believe the universe displays God's design. And I'm John Sorensen. I'll be back later with a vital resource. My father, the late Dr. D. James Kennedy, saw clearly how evolution was religion under a different name. And he saw how evolutionists were stacking the deck in their favor by trying to have creationism thrown out of our schools. We begin today's program with his powerful message, Creationism, Science or Religion? Our scripture lesson this morning is taken from the first epistle of Paul to Timothy, chapter 6, beginning with verse 13. May we hear the word of our God. I give thee charge in the sight of God, who quickeneth all things, and before Christ Jesus, who before Pontius Pilate witnessed a good confession that thou keep this commandment without spot, unrebukable, until the, the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, which in his times he shall show who is the blessed and only potentate, the King of kings and Lord of lords, who only hath immortality, dwelling in the light which no man can approach unto, whom no man hath seen nor can see, to whom be honor and power everlasting, amen. Charge them that are rich in this world, that they be not high-minded, nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God, who giveth us richly all things to enjoy, that they do good, that they be rich in good works, ready to distribute, willing to communicate, laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come, that they may lay hold on eternal life. O oh, Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust, avoiding profane and vain babblings and oppositions of science falsely so called, which some professing have erred concerning the faith. Grace be with thee. Amen. And may God, who inspired these words, enlighten our hearts and minds through them this day, and may his name ever be praised. Amen. Over the centuries, the attacks upon the Christian church have changed, and they have increased both in intensity and in comprehension. For example, there was a time when the attacks focused upon the literal or allegorical interpretation of the Scripture, a time when they fixed their attacks on some of the miracles of the Bible. Then they progressed to attacks upon the virgin birth or the bodily resurrection or the second coming of Christ. Then there were attacks upon the deity of Christ and his atonement. But today, Today, the basic assault upon Christianity is total and all-encompassing. The basic attack 
is upon the very existence of God himself. The foundation for all religion and all spiritual life itself. And this attack, of course, is coming to us in the form of a scientific dogma, the dogma of evolution, which indeed, if it had its way, would rid the world of the last vestiges of any belief in God. We are told today that we have not been wonderfully and marvelously fashioned by the hand of God, but whether, rather we are the product of a clever and cunning amoeba. I'm sure that uh, some of us will be moved to a spirit of adoration when we think of such a thing. This is my amoeba's world. I rest me in the thought that he has produced all things. And I think that it would be only appropriate that every morning each of us would get down on his knees and give thanks and praise to the amoeba which has created you. Well, here is the battle and here is the most all-encompassing attack that Christianity has ever faced. Today we live in a time when there has been at the same time a number of things which have been happening simultaneously. One, there has been a tremendous renaissance and revival of the teaching of creationism. Simultaneous to that, there has been a collapse of many of the basic pillars upon which evolution has stood. Uh, attacks which are multiplying, made not merely by creationists, but by evolutionists themselves. And more and more of the basic pillars of evolution are crumbling. At the same time, the evolutionists, it seems, in a panic, are shouting louder than ever, ever before, just at the time when evolution is in total disorder, disarray, and chaos. They're screaming at the top of their lungs, evolution is a fact, and it doesn't need even to be established by evidence any longer. Evolution is scientific, creationism is religious. Well, the fact of the matter is, that neither evolution nor creationism fully meet the rigorous demands of science. The basic uh, tenets of science are it must be observable, testable, repeatable, and falsifiable. Now the fact is neither evolution nor creation is any of those. Therefore it does not really fall into the realm of strict science. We can set up two models. We can look at all of the evidence and see whether it points to one or the other, and we can see what predictions they make. And we can conclude which we believe is true. I have before mentioned the fact that Dr. Karl Popper, the greatest living philosopher of science in the world today, who has been described by a Nobel Prize winner as the greatest philosopher of science that ever lived, Dr. Karl Popper said not only that evolution is not a fact, but it is not even a theory. Not only is it not a theory, it is not even a scientific hypothesis because it cannot be falsified. Every scientific theory or hypothesis must be able to be proved wrong. It is not. There is no way that anybody has ever conceived of being able to prove evolution wrong. When they prove one part of it wrong, they simply change the theory to make it fit another part. It is, he said, at best, a metaphysical research program. Now, metaphysics is a lot closer to religion than it is to science, which is to say that evolution really isn't scientific. In fact, most of the evidence you'll find points away from the evolutionary model and it points to the creationist model. Furthermore, evolution, as many scientists have said, flies in the face of established scientific laws. So that increasingly, with increasing evidence, especially in the last five or six years, they've seen that the laws of science are being violated by evolution. It violates the first law of thermodynamics and the second law of thermodynamics. It violates the laws of probability. In fact, it violates so many laws of science that a few years ago, when 
a group of the world's leading mathematicians met with a group of the leading evolutionary biologists and were presenting to them the problems, the mathematical problems that were showing up concerning evolution. The probabilities against any aspect of evolution happening being virtually impossible that they called for a great consultation at the Wistar Institute in Philadelphia. And there, 52 of the greatest evolutionary biologists and the greatest mathematicians in the world met, and with a digital computer, they began to examine the mathematical problems with evolution. They concluded that evolution was absolutely mathematically impossible. It's interesting also that in the 100th anniversary edition, every man's library edition of Darwin's book, we find there that uh, A. Harrison Matthews, a leading scientist and evolutionist, said belief in the theory of evolution is thus exactly parallel to belief in special creation. It is a faith. We might even go further and say that I could produce numbers of statements from scientists who actually declare that evolution is their god. Not even a tenet of their religion, the pillar of their religion, but their god itself. May I quote you one? Charles Darwin referred to, quote, my deity, natural selection. And numbers of other scientists have said that evolution is virtually their god. So we see that evolution is not merely scientific, it is not even good science, and it is certainly prominent religion. Well, what about creationism? It is a matter of dealing with merely scientific evidence that points to one of the two models. Did life arise, as evolutionists say, gradually, or did it arise abruptly? Well, if you look at the fossil record, you'll see that there's a record of abrupt rise. Every single phyla of invertebrate fossils are found in the oldest rocks, the Cambrian rocks. They suddenly appear. And yet some scientist has the gall to say that 100 million fossils in our museums conclusively prove that evolution is a fact. The truth is that 100 million fossils in our museums without one single intermediate link conclusively prove that evolution is a lie. It is science, falsely so called, as Paul said, which some, having believed, have erred from the faith. So we see that creationism is indeed scientific. Creationism violates none of the laws of science as evolution does, but is in complete harmony with them. So we see that this attempt to suppress all of the scientific evidence for creationism, scientific creationism, is a form of censorship and is exceedingly ironic that the ACLU and People for the American Way and others like that who cry constantly against censorship would be in the forefront of this attempt to censor out this information. This, of course, amounts to nothing more than brainwashing. When all of the evidence on one side is presented and all the evidence on the other side is repressed, this is not education, it is brainwashing. Scientific pedagogical studies have shown that students learn better under testing, it has been shown they learn better when both models are presented, the evidence for each side is given, and they are unable to make up their own mind. And furthermore, when you read the statements of leading evolutionists, you see, as has been documented in a number of books and writings on the subject, that these men, most all of the leading evolutionists, were motivated by a tremendous antipathy and hostility toward the Christian message toward God, toward the Bible. The same thing is true <clears throat> for modern evolutionists like George Gaylord Simpson, Professor Darlington, people like Stephen Jay Gould and Eldridge, who are atheists and Marxists and the leaders of the, the leaders of the evolutionary movement today and down through the years have been atheists, though many of the followers try to keep one foot in each camp. Huxley, said that he looked with contempt upon those people who tried to have one foot in each camp 
and try to reconcile that which was unreconcilable. You cannot have a world governed by random chance, randomness, and at the same time a world which is governed by divine providence. They just will not fit together. You have to make a choice. There is a God who has created you, a God before whom one day you must stand and give answer for your life. You cannot evade or avoid that. You will come before him with whom we each and all have to do. There is a God who has loved us enough to send his son to die for our sins. Science falsely so called, which many having followed have erred concerning the faith. I would urge you not to so err, but to embrace Christ by faith, to place your trust in him as the living divine savior and to know that God has given you purpose, he has created you with a purpose and a meaning and significance for your life, and that that life is going to go on forever and ever and ever. And we do not have the hopeless, miasmic emptiness that the evolutionist offers to mankind. A meaninglessness and emptiness to life that has made suicide the second greatest cause of death among young people in our country today, because life has no purpose or meaning. Christ gives you that purpose. But the redemption of Christ is based upon the creation of God. He both made us and offers to remake us again in his own image. May we, by his grace, accept that gracious offer. Let us pray. Father, fill us with your spirit. Enable us to see the truth. May our eyes be opened unto thee, the great God, the maker of heaven and earth, the savior of men. May we turn to thee and trust in thee and find our joy, our happiness, our purpose, and our meaning for life. May we rejoice in the certainty that we shall be with thee everlastingly. In Jesus' name, amen. I hope you prayed that prayer with Dr. Kennedy and will truly accept God's purposes for your life and His creation. To help you, we'd like to send you the book, Beginning Again, written specifically for new believers. In it, you'll find solid instruction about how to pray, how to read and study God's Word, and even how to tell others about your newfound faith in Christ. Please write to the address on your screen or call our toll-free number. Ask for Beginning Again as you endeavor to walk faithfully with Jesus Christ. God bless you as you do. Evolutionists claim that creationism is religion and evolution is science. Yet evolution presents us with one view of the nature, purpose, and end of all of reality. If that's not religious, I don't know what is. As my father recognized, evolution is an alternative religion. And it's a religion that deals harshly with dissenters. As you're about to see, one highly qualified scientist found himself ostracized simply for pointing to the vast scientific evidence for a designer and creator of the universe. The Apollo 8 astronauts were the first ones to actually go around the moon and see the far side of the moon. They saw the Earth rising above the lunar landscape. It was so inspirational that uh, they decided to do something in, in recognition of that moment, and they read the first few passages from Genesis. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters, and God said, Let there be light. While observing the wonder of the earth, the astronauts joined those around the world who believed that a creator made it all. When astronomy professor and astrophysicist Guillermo Gonzalez arrives at work each day, he's doing something he dreamed of since leaving Cuba with his family as a young boy. From a very early age, I was an amateur astronomer. I spent many nights looking through my telescope in my backyard, and I decided I wanted to pursue a career in astronomy. 
but the journey from toy telescope to discovery of new planets would be almost as astounding as some of his observations about planet Earth, findings that starkly differed from some of the giants in astronomy. There are two ways of looking at it. Either it's an insignificant speck, just adrift in a meaningless universe, as Carl Sagan said, or else is a precious special jewel. A jewel perfectly positioned. We live in a very improbable universe, one that's unlikely to have been the result of just chance. Instead, he discovered Earth's intentional and planned placement in the universe. It's actually quite significant and quite special in its ability both to host complex life such as ourselves and the view that it affords us of the universe around us. Unlike other planets, Earth's view into the cosmos, free from solar dust and clouds, allowed scientists to see intelligent design. We have a transparent atmosphere, and that's something we just take for granted. We can see the stars at night. That's the best place to view solar eclipses in the solar system. And the best place to sustain life. Life that is very delicate and cannot withstand large climate variations or big catastrophes. And so many other things have to go just right in order to have life on a planet like ours. Gonzalez attained a tenure-track position at Iowa State University. There, he continued to explore Earth's unique alignment in the galaxy and published his findings. Within about six months of publishing the book, it began to be noticed by uh, others at Iowa State, and that's when my troubles began. Troubles that came from his conclusions about Earth's design. This accomplished astronomer now faced the danger of losing the job he had been preparing for all of his life. The people who led the attack uh, against me at Iowa State were local atheist professors. When Guillermo Gonzalez published his findings on intelligent design, he didn't anticipate an academic community would rise against him, threatening his job. They started attacking me as uh, somebody uh, trying to bring creationism into the classroom and basically misrepresenting my views on intelligent design. A number of professors circulated an anti-intelligent design petition statement on campus and over 120 faculty signed it. And they voted to deny me tenure. That actually came as a surprise to me because I thought I was doing very good work. Outstanding work, actually, according to the Chronicle of Higher Education, and with good reason. Gonzalez had published 68 articles in science journals and authored an astronomy textbook. In his research, he discovered the galactic habitable zone and two new planets. Even NASA relied on this accomplished astrophysicist for advice. And so I appealed. Uh, first to the president of the university, eventually to the Iowa State Board of Regents, and I was uh, turned down at both levels. Uh, they saw intelligent design as an, a real objective way of searching for evidence of purpose in nature, and that was violating many of these scientists' very cherished assumptions and uh, ideological beliefs, and they just couldn't let that stand. The denial of tenure meant the end of his position at Iowa State University. Gonzalez moved on to Grove City College and then Ball State University. But he continues his pursuit of scientific truth undaunted. My passion has not been subdued. I'm still continuing to pursue these truths and make discoveries, and I hope to for many years to come. Guillermo Gonzalez now teaches at Ball State University in Indiana. That's after having his life and career virtually upended over the past decade for faithfully reporting his scientific observations. We're told that science is supposed to be about the cold, hard facts. But the scientific establishment didn't want to hear about his facts. Understanding the atheistic worldview behind evolution, which is a faith position more than a scientific one, is absolutely essential in today's world where evolution is taught as fact everywhere we turn. For example, just recently, the Fox television networks aired a remaking of the old PBS series Cosmos that Carl Sagan did decades ago. And again, they began with a statement not of science, but of atheistic religion. Quote, 
the cosmos is all there is, or was, or ever will be." End quote. Science, which by definition can only measure the physical, could never prove such a statement. You and your children and grandchildren need to understand the false science and philosophy behind evolution. At Truth in Action Ministries, we've now compiled the best, most compelling messages from Dr. Kennedy on creation and evolution into a seven DVD series called The Root of the Problem. This set contains the full message, creationism, science, or religion, of which you've just seen a part of today. This set is available only through Truth in Action Ministries, and we're offering it for a generous donation of any amount for a limited time. Write to Box 6056, Albert Lee, Minnesota, 56007, or call toll-free 888-334-9762, or go online to truthinaction.org. This seven DVD set contains full-length messages, including the glorious creation, Evolution's Bloopers and Blunders, Evolution and You, and the title message, The Root of the Problem. With evolution taught so pervasively across our culture, from the science classrooms to the newsrooms and beyond, those of us entrusted with the truth of God's reality and word need to find ways to share with those who've been deceived. You'll want these messages to prepare yourself, your friends, and your church to be ready with an answer for the hope that is within you and the reality of God's glorious designs in all creation. Some of you can give $60. Others of you can give $70 or $100 or more. Whatever you can give helps us continue the vital work of proclaiming biblical truth to a culture that has embraced death. The exclusive seven DVD set, The Root of the Problem, is yours for a generous donation of any amount. Write to Box 6056, Albert Lee, Minnesota, 56007, or call toll-free 888-334-9762, or go online to truthinaction.org. Please be sure to send a generous gift today and request this important set, The Root of the Problem. Thank you for joining us, and may God bless you as you stand with us. And may God bless America with repentance and a new national awakening. A video of today's program is available on DVD for your gift to this ministry of any amount. So please call, write, or log on to our website today. Next week on Kennedy Classics. My friends, may I say that the view of evolution is directly responsible for about 200 million deaths in the 20th century alone. Adolf Hitler fancied himself an intellectual. He was always referring to Darwin and to the science of Darwinism as, an, as a reason and as a support for his racist theory. That's next week. This has been a production of Truth in Action Ministries.